you learning now? So imagine with me two believers. Call this one brother A, call this one brother B. Are we learning? All saved. But now this brother is ignorant of all of these things. Not knowing that your destiny depends on your engaging the word of God. Imagine the kind of life this believer will have. Not knowing there is such a thing called speed in the kingdom. Not knowing there is such a thing called favor in the kingdom. In fact, you imagine that this believer does not even know or believe that demonic attack is real. Unfortunately, this man is going to pay the price for the rest of his life. Because the devil will make sure he keeps him thinking like that. Now, you can find another believer who believes in the presence and the existence and the reality of Satan, but does not believe that victory over demons is real. He will still spend his life thinking about demons and fighting for the rest of his life. Look at another believer who's had the privilege to be methodically mentored. Engaging all these forces like you are learning, their results would not be the same. And the revelation of Jesus through their lives would not be the same. I wonder which of these three you are in this service now. There are people who are completely ignorant, very sincere, but ignorant. They knock doors and doors don't open because they don't even know how doors open. They don't have keys. They don't have relationships. They don't have the power to break the doors. Hmm. Are we together? There are many believers who say things like, I don't need any man. All I need is God. Well, if they are talking about the sovereignty of God, I understand what they are trying to say. But some of them mean, I don't need any man. Oh dear, you don't need any man? No. John chapter 5 and verse 7. The man who was at Bethesda. The Bible says when Jesus came and met him and said, Why are you in this condition? Would you be healed? He said, I have no man. Is that in your Bible? not i know where the solution is but i have no man and you've heard me say it and let me say it for the first time here in the u.s that all blessings come from god through men to man let's say it together all blessings come from god through men your promotion comes from god through men the keys to your house come from god through men your promotion letter will come from god through men all attacks come from Satan through men to men. Wickedness comes from Satan through men. So whether it is God or Satan, men have always been midwives for pain. Listen, this orientation alone will make you respect spiritual laws like the law of honor. I'm sure many of you saw the photo where I went to just greet and honor Dr. Mike Mudok, the law of honor. Because every time doors close, they close in response to dishonor. Dishonor to God, dishonor to men, dishonor to principles. Is someone learning now? So some of you have been angry, angry with God. Why is my life not changing? Here's why. You need to understand spiritual laws and then to obtain grace to engage them. This is how we walk in dominion. Things will work themselves one day, unfortunately. That's superstitious thinking. If your life is going to change, you will have to arise, take responsibility, obtain the enabling grace, content for knowledge, obtain the faith to act. Are we together? That means I can become another version of me. You, we're still reminiscing on the testimony of that, our gentleman. Yeah. He listened to the word. He listened to the word. What was he getting? Number one, transformation. Number two, the impartation that comes with every word. Because grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge. You don't look for grace, you look for knowledge. With every dimension of knowledge you find, the grace component that empowers you to walk in that light is released. So if, say, you are not healed, looking for the grace for healing is a wrong way. You won't find it. Look for the word that brings you health. When you find that word, the grace connected to it. Graces are connected to revelations. Are we together now? 
You are looking for the grace for prosperity, for increase. You won't find it that way. Find the word. Find the principle connected to the increase of the saints. With that increase will come that grace. Are we together? Yes. So most believers are ignorant. This is what I've been driving at. That most believers are saved. But I'm telling you they are ignorant. Do you know? I, I would say this humorously to my people back home. That when God connects you to a teaching priest. That understands scripture. Alongside the grace to methodically show you the part of the spirit. You have been given a great advantage in life. Yes sir. Yes sir. It is true. When God really wants to help a man, he shortens the distance between you and a teaching priest. He shortens the distance between you and a teaching priest. You imagine what you are learning now. You will step out of this place with a higher level of enlightenment. And you will be able to explain to another person that you're being angry with God. You're getting it wrong. There is a way the kingdom works. Are we together? Yes. There's a way the kingdom works. I'm not growing spiritually. Do you understand the forces that control spiritual growth? The force of consistent prayer. The, the force of the study of the word, meditating upon that word and confessing it. The force of fellowship, Psalm 133. Behold how good and how pleasant it is when brethren dwell in unity. You cannot grow spiritually in isolation. You've got to be connected to a larger body of believers. So you receive both vertically and horizontally. You are receiving from God, but there is a sharing of graces among brethren. An individual who does not know that will not grow spiritually. Even if you've been saved for 10 years. So with this understanding now, if someone comes to you and says, um, I want to grow spiritually. You're not going to beat about the bush. With mastery and understanding, you will tell him, submit yourself to the ministry of prayer consistently, strategically. And in doing so, don't pray like an unbeliever. Make sure your first assignment in the place of prayer is to find the scripture that supports the things you are saying. Don't just, listen, the, the disciples told Jesus, teach us to pray. The issue with them was not prayerlessness. It was prayer that was not effective. They noticed that every time Jesus prayed, there, there were results that followed his prayer. Are we together? Father, thank you for my life. But you see, America is not treating me well. And I don't know when you are going to attend to me. This, this, this thing is weighing on me. Because God is merciful. He's not a demon. He will still come with his compassion, but if you are to get results, you will have to find what the word says. Are we learning? What does the Bible say? Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1. It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to do and to observe all that I command you this day. Are we together? that all these blessings shall come upon you, overtake you, you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth. You won't believe where I was when I saw this scripture. And I believed it. I believed it. That a man can be exalted by grace to a point where no nation sustains the ability to reject you, nor reject the investment of God upon your life. It doesn't work because of your personality. It works because of his integrity. Let me say it again. Results don't just happen because of your personality. It happens because of his integrity. Genesis 21 verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he has spoken. The Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. The Lord visited Sarah as he has said and did unto Sarah as he has spoken. God visits as he says. Are we together? He does as he's spoken. So if he has spoken great things concerning you, you have to know what he has said. If you do not know what he has said, you cannot engage it. 
this is beyond claiming scripture. I'm sorry to say this, but let me abuse your theology a bit. We are not given any assignment to claim scripture. You engage scripture. You don't get resolved by claiming. Now, don't, don't feel bad and don't go harassing any man of God, okay? Please. But that idea of just claiming, you can receive. That is true. But for results to work, you must engage it. The one who does the word is the one who receives results. It says, now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. Ever learning, the Bible says, but never coming unto the knowledge of the truth. So there are many believers who know, I know, I know, but the results don't speak. You must obtain grace at this service to engage the word. Engage the word. If you've been told that effective prayer translates to power, don't just know it and archive it in your mind or on paper. Obtain grace to engage it. It is the person who actually prays that becomes powerful, not the person who knows that prayer produces power. The one who engages is the one who comes back. The Bible says, he that weepeth, bearing precious seeds. The one who actually bears the seeds and sows them is the one who will return rejoicing bring in the sheaves. If prayer produces power, then I must engage the prayer ministry consistently. Now, it is not something that happens mechanically. There is an engracing that empowers me. It's called the enabling grace. Are we together? But then the responsibility of submitting yourself to prayer is your business and you must engage. If understanding the word of God and engaging the word with power helps me to be enlightened and helps me to manifest dominion in experience then i must become a student of scripture i must ward off anything that tries to kill my passion my passion over the word because whatever that force is it is fighting my destiny are we together if corporate fellowship is a platform for growth increased transference of graces then i must reject everything that wants to fight my fellowshipping with believers. Are we together? The laws of the kingdom. Please listen to me. America is a good land. But to deliver the riches and the blessings resident within your nation to you, it will take beyond jumping and saying, I'm in America. You must engage the word of God. Do you know that there are people who are willing to favor you in this land? But until you, you contact the grace called favor and know how to engage it, you will pass your destiny helpers sometimes every day and yet they will not look to you with compassion. You've heard the testimony. I mean, you've heard it in the lady I was hearing her just staying in one place, greeting someone and then the person was willing to pay off her bills. No, people are not that kind. I can tell you. There is a grace that makes people behave that way. So it's important for us to know that in understanding this concept of being more than conquerors, we must appreciate the fact that God's glory, the manifestation of it on earth, depends on on our ability to produce results our ability to produce results our ability to produce results in Acts chapter 4 and verse 33 the Bible says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ with great power with great power gave the apostles witness evidence of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and it says great grace was upon them all with great power gave the apostles witness so the apostles did not just announce that Jesus is risen they gave witness to it they gave witness to it are we together in Acts chapter 8 from verse 5, the Bible says, Philip went down to Samaria and there he preached Christ unto the people. And the Bible says they gave heed with one accord to the things that Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Hearing and seeing. 
please look at me. You want to become light and salt. You want to manifest as a victorious believer. It is important people do not only hear what you have to say. They must see the evidence. The Bible says, oh, taste and see. Not just believe. There is an experience to our faith work. May that experience begin to speak in your life. That someone will look at your life and it would have changed like night and day. And you bring great glory to Jesus. Great glory to Jesus. Amen. So you must understand number one and appreciate the necessity for extraordinary results. You will not content to walk in the experience of this more than conqueror dimension. You may not see the need to contend until you walk in unquestionable dominion for as long as you do not know that your being fruitful, your bearing fruit brings glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It gives perspective to your pursuit. So it's not just a mundane, carnal pursuit to be prosperous or to be promoted. You see that now? The moment you tie the revelation of God's glory to your pursuit, it ceases to be carnal. What makes it carnal is the fact that Christ and the revelation of Jesus is not represented in your pursuit. Please look up. Carnality has nothing to do with having or losing things. The purpose for which you have or lose them is what makes anything carnal. So if you are trusting God to be a multimillionaire, for instance, what makes that pursuit carnal or otherwise is how Christ will be revealed through that pursuit. If in your being wealthy and blessed, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ will have support from your wealth, the purposes of God's souls will be saved, then that pursuit ceases to be carnal. Are we together now? Yes. Carnality is not just defined as the coming or the going, the living of things. It is how much the revelation of Christ is tied to that pursuit. So you want to become a director, you want to become an entrepreneur, you want to become a great man of God. All of these pursuits in themselves are not wrong. But if on one end the pursuit leads to the glorification of self, that is now carnality. On the other hand, if it leads to the revelation and the glorification of the Christ, that is a spiritual pursuit. Is someone learning? I'm teaching you this so that you do not spare when it has to do with evolving to become your best self. You can connect that pursuit to the revelation of Christ and you are no longer afraid. I want to be my best. I want to give my best. I want Koinonia to be its best. Are we together? And I am not afraid to fire on four cylinders, all four cylinders. The reason is because at the end of it, it is not the revelation of self. So if God wants to anoint me, the more my answer will be yes, sir. If God wants to prosper me, the more my answer will be yes, sir. If God wants to multiply my influence, my answer will be yes, sir. The reason why I'm not afraid of receiving is because it will be used for his glory. Someone say, my results. my results. Come on, shout it. Say, my results, my results. will reveal Jesus. My results, my results will glorify Jesus. Glorify. One more time, say, my results, my results. will reveal Jesus. My results, my results. will glorify Jesus. Glorify. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. This is the foundational orientation that every believer needs to have. So it makes your pursuit to be mundane if it is not connected to this revelation or it makes your pursuit spiritual. Any activity that leads to the glorification of self alone from a spiritual standpoint is a total waste. Doesn't matter what it is. Have you heard of a man in the Bible called a rich fool? What did I call him? Rich fool. Now, foolishness and wealth should not go hand in hand because wealth is a product of wisdom. But here is someone combining something that should not be a rich fool. And why was he foolish? He was not foolish because he was wealthy. He was foolish because the purpose of the wealth was for self. He said, I will build bigger bands. When he built bigger bands, he said, my soul, find rest in this. And he said, no, you've lost the purpose. This day, your soul is demanded from you. How about another rich man in the Bible called Solomon whose life was to glorify God at least for a major part of his life. 
How about a man called Joseph of Arimathea who used his wealth and influence to buy the grave where Jesus would lay? And that was because of that grave, we can now say, Oh, grave, where is your sting? Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus because your heart is already set to reveal Jesus through your life. May there be no restriction to your rising. No restriction to your becoming in the name of Jesus. My life changed when I realized that I could serve the purposes of God while walking in victory. Now, whether you choose to be Abraham or Lazarus, at least two of them loved God. The problem was their condition. One could not really glorify God through their lives. The Bible says, now glorify the Lord with your life, your body, which is the Lord's. You can glorify God through your finances, glorify God through your growth. Most believers love Jesus, they serve Jesus, they intend to serve Jesus, but their lives and their results cannot attract people to Jesus because through their lives, they are selling a Jesus that the nations cannot receive. Did you get my point? Yes. Your life should be able to market Jesus in a way that the nations would desire him. And my assignment is number one, to help you see that God wants to get glory through your life. That as a believer, you must not just stop at revealing him. He wants you to be victorious whilst doing that. He wants your bills paid. He wants you to experience favor. How many of you were blessed by these testimonies already? <laughs> Hallelujah. So for you to know that God the manifestation of his glory on earth in America, in Dallas, across North America, generally speaking, depends on your fruitfulness, depends on your producing results in every area of your life. Can we consider the second point? The second point I want you to know and learn is that producing results, working in dominion, Living and manifesting that more than conqueror dimension depends on your knowledge of spiritual laws. Walking in victory, walking in the experience of dominion, please listen, depends on your knowledge, your thorough understanding of spiritual laws. Someone say spiritual laws. One more time, say spiritual laws. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3, the Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Are we still together? Who hath blessed us? Say, I am blessed. I am blessed. You're confessing the word of God and this translates to victory. So when I say you repeat after me, you do that with conviction. Say, I am blessed. I am who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. We have been blessed already. At what point were we blessed? When we received Jesus. Are we together? When we received Jesus, the life of God that was deposited into our spirits came with that blessing. But... But the experience of that blessing will not happen by default. It needs to be released on account of knowledge. And I'm showing you now that there are spiritual laws that govern dominion. There are spiritual laws that govern walking and living in the experience of victory. Many believers love God, but they are ignorant of the laws. Are we together? Operating this mic that I'm holding depends on laws. It is possible to be holding a very wonderful mic but not know how to operate it. The Bible says, they know not, Psalm 82 from verse 5, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. It says, ye are gods. I have said, ye are gods and all of you, not some of you, are children of the Most High. But then it says, you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. The reason? Ignorance. My people, Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, 
my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge are destroyed for the lack of knowledge are destroyed for the lack of knowledge you can be a victim of what you do not know there are spiritual laws for instance please look up how many of you have heard and seen the results from this grace called favor now you imagine a believer that does not even know such a possibility exists you see that that believer will live a very defeated life angry at god angry at god why why is my life so hard and then perhaps another one will hear a teaching on favor and with all due respect hear something like favor is unmerited no that's not true no that's not true favor is in dimensions only one dimension of favor is unmerited the favor that translates as saving grace every other dimension of favor is merited it is programmed through knowledge proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15 read it with me if you are a christian and let that put that to rest because you see what you believe affects the results you produce read with me if you can see it projected i hope you do ready one to read one more time one more time all right so let's finish up but the way of transgressors is that in your bible that hardship has an explanation and favor ease has an explanation so many well-intentioned people have all kinds of ideas for instance about the favor of god how about speed how many of you have heard that there is a grace called speed that a man can actually receive acceleration in his life. Now you imagine a believer who is, is bankrupt of this knowledge, doesn't know. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Okay, so I have one here. Is that working? Test it. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say you love Jesus. Love Say you love me. Love yes, Amen. Okay, so let's get to work. I will hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome again, viewers. Welcome our subscribers. We love you so much. The Lord bless you for staying tuned to this time, watching this particular video from God's servant, Apostle Joshua Selman and on this platform, Reflector Up TV. As we all know, Reflector Up TV is aimed at the conformity of God's people to the image of the Christ, seeing that um, the conformity of us, of men, of all men, on this platform and beyond, become that of the Christ. And so the picture of which we are portraying is to see that the Christ is being revealed in and through our lives. And thank God for giving us such a wonderful and a precious vessel like Apostle Joshua Selman and cut across all um, the, um, the, 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 the body of Christ, different uh, powerful men of God that God is raising in our time, right? So, but then, thank God for a, a, a man of God like Apostle Jerusalem, whom God is using so much to be a blessing to us, not just to you, our viewers, but also to us too as well on our organization, Reflector Hub Global, all right? So, we bless God so much, and the aim of all of this is to see that our life become that of the Christ, right? So. Uh, thank you for staying tuned to this time, watching this video um, being a blessing uh, through the media platform. Right, so um, the scripture rightfully said that um, a man called Elijah was a man of like passion, but that Elijah did something that made him outstood during his time of living. The Bible said that he prayed earnestly, he prayed earnestly, he prayed earnestly. And I believe so much that these prayers you've just received right now from God's servant, Apostle Joshua Selman, and even our, our viewers, as you are watching this video, you are also partaking in the prayer. All right, it is not just to just pray, the Bible said to pray earnestly that the effectual prayer of the righteous man is said it availeth much. So it means that when you pray effectively, um, just like how Elijah did, he said he was a man of like passion. It means he was a man just like us, all right, but that he did something extraordinary that made his life turn from being just ordinary to become an extraordinary life. And this is what Elijah did that made him outstood during his time. And the Bible said that he prayed earnestly, he prayed earnestly, and then rain came down from the heavens 
and then there was enough to eat and to drink. And this is what the blessings of God can do. Imagine a man prayed and rain come down. If you, it means that if you also can pray, you can turn things around in your life. If you also can pray, you can change that hard situation. If you also can pray, you can also be a blessing to others. If you also can pray, you can open your heavens and cause rain to come down. If you also can pray, you can command your day by just doing that prayer. It is just a simple practice you do every day, every day, every day like that. And as soon as, and as, and as much as you continue doing that, you find out that everything around your life begins to turn, everything begins to work for good, for better, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for staying tuned with us. The Lord bless you so much. The Lord bless you so much. The Lord bless you for us. Um, if you are a new uh, viewer on this channel, Reflect Up TV, would advise you to please subscribe to this channel click on the subscribe button right there and like this video so that others who have not seen this video would also see it right and then drop a comment in the comment section below we would love to hear from you guys your thoughts about this video right and and share your testimony with, with, with us on the comment section also we would like to share your testimony with the world and to also let the world know that god is still in the business of performing miracles god is in the business of doing of changing the lives of people by the special grace of god all right the lord bless you um see you in our next video we love you so much from reflect up tv we love you so much and the lord bless you in the name of jesus christ thank you